This one is really gnarly because we have this giant growth. It's likely a tumor. It grew really fast. It's incredibly vasculated. It looks like a piece of liver and it's about the size of a pecan. All right, guys, I'm here to explain what you're about ready to watch. So this cell phone video I had to do on the fly, and uh, generally I actually had Tara filming it. I got a boa from a friend. I met him in Pennsylvania. He actually drove to meet each other for me to, uh, to get this boa. He has this beautiful black-eyed leucistic emperor or princess diamond boa. And she had eaten a defrosted rabbit. So he'd never given him any problems. She's a breeder, so it's a big, beautiful, gorgeous, like bucket list type boa. He was describing the animal to me, and as I was talking to him for a, a week and something, I said, dude, I need to get that animal. If it's because he's like, I think it's gonna die. He can't get a vet. How do you deal with it? He's like, let's meet. So I met him in Pennsylvania, picked up the animal, brought the animal back here. And then a couple days later, its face blew up inside of its mouth. It was hanging out with its mouth open. Blood vessels in the, the mouth were all super dilated. So when you start seeing, you know, like a healthy bow would have a very light pink uh, gums and you start seeing these very purpley gums. So the blood vessels are all dilated. That's a classic example of a systemic infection. So you have a bloodborne infection. It might initially start as a localized trauma and then the infection starts spreading and then it starts compromising the animal's body and it's the immune system is actually having to deal with that. It's very easy to only want to show you like, hey, this is going to be a success and I, so far we have not done this. This one is really gnarly because we have this giant growth. It's likely a tumor. It grew really fast. It's incredibly vasculated. It looks like a piece of liver and it's about the size of a pecan. Today's it's fourth shot I'm going to be giving. So I'm treating with an aminoglide. So in this case, I'm treating with genomycin. That's treated every 72 hours. And the initial dose is five milligram per kilogram. That's the loading dose. And then all other subsequent doses are half. 2.5 milligram per kilogram every, every 72 hours. You have to make sure you're managing hydration. So you're managing kidney health. Because uh, if you don't do that, I'm injecting it with something that has a very strong uh, reactiveness to the renal system and if I'm not making sure the animal's in uh, optimal health I can actually hurt it and cause it long-term damage because remember as, as reptiles age their kidney function starts to go downhill. I am not going to sit here and go hey Don this is an easy one this is like a really big challenge because of this large growth in the mouse it's very painful for the animal so I've been cleaning it managing it and I just did another procedure last night I just missed Donnie and I actually tied off, it's almost like a mushroom. It looks like a piece of liver, it's really horrific. And I tied it off, so almost like a, a ligature, I used actually dental floss. So I took dental floss, I put it in a pobo iodine, and I cleaned it up, I cleaned up my hands, whatever. And I went around the base of the mushroom, so to speak. And where it is, it's on the inside of the mouth, on the lower mandible, inside, the, the gum, like, so you have the teeth, you have the gums, the teeth, and then inside that to the left of the snake's glottis. And you have this large growth, and it's got like a base, probably about three quarters of an inch. So it's really vasculated, so there's all these blood vessels coming out there. It's feeding this thing. Opening it up, it is not like an abscess. It's not like full of any kind of necrotic tissue. It's not filled with fluid other than blood. If I start messing with it, it bleeds. I'm gonna to have to cauterize it, so we're gonna be stitching it and all the different stuff. I could lose this animal. I really, really could. This is really involved. Uh, but I kind of a little bit excited too because the animal's got a real, it's a strong animal. It's, it's like massive. And so she has a lot of uh, health behind her. She's not in like a horrible state. If you work on animals that are not stabilized and they're always in a immune compromised state, and I don't actually have an immune system that's working in, connection or collection with uh, antibiotics, it makes the whole thing harder. I uh, want you guys to see this, and I really do appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I love reading the comments about medical professionals and vet techs and all that, and if you guys are in our audience, please continue 
Uh, I really like people offer some different information. People talking about salivary stones and all that. That was kind of interesting. Um, from what I can tell, the mass is very meaty. It's very kind of solid and spongy, but not, not a lot of give. And obviously, I'm not really trying to hurt the animal. And uh, so there's really good ideas, and I really do appreciate that. I am certainly, you know, once again, I always say this is anecdotal. This is information I've taught myself, and I'm trying to manage in intelligent thoughts as well as ideas. So everybody remember the rescue gecko? So this guy had a really gnarly uh, infection in his cloaca. Let's take a look at it now after some treatment, after my little procedure. Hi, buddy. Hold on to me. What do you think? You remember what that looked like? Yeah, it was a big stone in there, it looked like. Oh, it was, a big chickpea. Yeah. So it was right, yeah. So we've been cleaning it up. So uh, been managing it, and it's only topical. Antibiotic ointment and keeping it clean. So keeping it dry, clean, obviously managing proper temperatures, but uh, it worked out. So you're putting that down the table so he feels comfortable enough to maybe eat? So, so one of the problems is we don't feed our king cobras outside their enclosures. So when I put them on the flat surface, they start panicking, trying to back up, get their tails wrapped around something. And that will then often turn off the food instinct and then put them in a little bit more defensive. I'm nervous, what's going on? So I wanna kinda of see if we can get Lucifer to come out after his surgery, he is doing fantastic. And the surgery, this is an animal. <laughs> you try to get me. Yeah, he's very ready yeah. to go. Hi, buddy. This is an animal that uh, really I was worried about because it was, uh, I think he had a pretty good parasitic infection due to the diet that he had prior to us getting it. And I had never formally wormed him. And uh, it caught up with me. I wanted to get him to go in the cave for a sec. Slow. Listen to that kiss and growl. I really want to get your snake. Okay. He's starting to wrap it. Stillborn snake. Do you come here? My says he's a bad hombre. Hey buddy. So that's just still a little defensive with his mouth gaping too. But he's at least kind of thinking. When he, uh, 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 he might have just got a whiff of it. Watch yourself, Tony. You were absolutely terrified this snake was going to die. Yeah, I was. That's no joke, guys. He's not... He doesn't fake emotions very well, so it was real. He's, he's coming... You, so you can see the regular part of his hood on the left side. But I'd say it's just like some scar tissue. Hi, buddy. So yeah, he, he opens his mouth because he's a little bit nervous. I'm trying not to freak him out. Yeah, you're doing fine. His feeding is is better than it's ever been. When we first got him, he was a real problem getting him to eat. Period. It was uh, terrible. And for them to eat in front of you, they really have to uh, do away with some of their fear. Just gotta get the tongue to start flicking. This is all defensive. Yeah. 
He's definitely doing better as far as personality too, because he was just insane. His, his, I mean, he's looking at how he's studying that. They're, they're magnific magnificently intelligent as far as their brain is working. Nice right, so looking at you. Don't worry about me. Oh, tongue flicking. Smell, there's a snake that you want to eat. Oh. So you're going to be a baby. I always hear about snakes eating weird things. So for a second, I just took a turkey dog. So it's just a turkey dog. It doesn't have preservatives, so it even goes bad. Nuked it for a couple, 30 seconds in the microwave. Let it cool. I'm just going to see if one of my king cobras will eat a turkey dog. I don't really know what to expect. I just want to see. Remember, this is not a full food item. What's a full food item, Kevin? Like a complete snake or a rodent that has, you know, like a drumstick. bones and all that. So even, no, actually, there's a lot of people that are feeding like drumsticks and stuff like that to snakes. But even that isn't a complete complete food item because it has bone. It doesn't have like a, a lot of like the stomach contents and the organs and all that stuff. So it's going to provide, you know, more vitamin D and all that if you had the organs and all that. But uh, I'm just going to do this. It's kind of for fun. Wow, wow. That? She, she's thought about it. She's got to guess that she's not defensive. She likes ball pythons better. Oh, oh she got a taste. Very interesting. <laughs> I heard the things break the skin on the hot dog there. Did you hear that? I, I heard at least when they, were, they got caught. I guess she's still swallowing. So what could happen is you leave it in a cage and then she decides, because she'll eat chicks, quails, stillborn monitors, stillborn snakes, and that's just a turkey, a turkey dog, just ground up turkey and parts. And if she decides that it is edible, once she gets a taste for it and she decides that's part, she'd be more likely to probably grab it. But the question is if I leave it in her cage, she might inspect it and decide. Hi, buddy. How are you? I'm, I'm okay. Um, so I, I, I got Donnie here. So we're talking for... Um, Hi, Donnie. Uh, What's up? Your forest cobra is very impressive. That big, big head and you're playing kissy face with him. Okay, no, it's good. It's, it looks like, uh, I think, pretty much a standard protocol, just the, the worming first. So I, I explained a little bit. I didn't even know that you had any problems with your forest cobra. Oh no, I was meant to message you and I clean forgot about it. Then the video came out. <laughs> it's good. The it's... difference with him and the king is his lumps are not full of fluid. His lumps are, they've got like a little, some of them have got like a little, I, I want to call it a cyst almost in there. Okay, so when and you I, open up a cyst, so when you open up a cyst, obviously there's different kinds of cysts. And if this is like, like just a subcutaneous, so it's under the first dermal layer or if it's into the muscle. So I imagine this is probably just under the skin and is it kind of like yeah. movable? Yes. Mm, all right. So I can, I can cut it and it comes out quite easily most of it. And what, what is it when it comes out? It's like a little pink disc. What happens is the body takes whatever that organism or whatever the pathogen or whatever it is and then it tries to encapsulate it and then isolate that so it's immune response and it basically just uh negates you know that organism from you know doing well but um we we can discuss this further on monday but you're already on it so that's that's wonderful so i have lucifer so you, you saw that horrible mass that i got out of uh, lucifer's yeah, neck yeah, yeah. i've wormed him multiple times i did the surgery and he is doing fantastic he eats now better than he's ever fed for me, ever. But I got him from somebody else that was feeding him while I caught rat snakes. So I literally thought he was going to 
like die at one point. I was like kind of horrified. I was like, oh my god. I saw that video and I saw him squeezing that stuff out of his neck. I was like, how can this snake live from that? All right, hey, hey, so 12 o'clock? Okay. okay, so 12 o'clock Monday, buddy. All right. Okay? We'll see you then. Now. Okay. All right, bye. bye. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!